hey, I wanted to say Happy New Year. And I know I've been away for the this tail end part of the year, but work is work, family's family, got things to do. But I am here for 2012, got lots of videos planned, so I hope you stay subscribed, keep watching, and if you've got any other ideas that I have not hit, and maybe I've said I'm going to hit, remind me, I will try to fit things in and, and get as much of the content out there. While most of the majority of the tech world is very focused on mobile, yes, I'm going to address mobile, lots of my usual opinions and theories and then explanations of technologies, but I think we need to get also get back to the desktop. We can't forget about the desktop. I know a lot of people like to think we're beyond that, but hey, that's the very thing that's still creating all of the programs and applications that we're using in mobile. And there are going to be some good things coming to the desktop and other things dealing with the, on the server sides and te network technologies and things that are coming out that make our lives better kind of the magic behind the scenes. So I still think a lot of that is very valid and technical and in keeping with my true tradition of why I even make YouTube videos and explaining technology in the first place, I think those kinds of things are very important. Anyway, if you have been following me on Twitter, I would suggest you do. I'm usually, most of the time, I always have something to say on, on Twitter. It's MrBit10. Go ahead and start following uh, you may not like all my opinions out there. Sometimes I get very sarcastic. So it depends on my mood. I'm a moody guy. It just depends. Hey, if I'm in the middle of an error or something while I'm programming, it, it, who knows what comes out, what I'm going to tweet. If I'm in a good mood, maybe I've had a scotch. Who knows? It's always a fun thing to follow. That said, uh, there's other... I will be participating within the That Show That Sucks as well. We do iWorlds, Tech Babble type thing I think we're changing the pattern this year where we just it's a very long shows and if you're into that and, and watching it that long that channel is also in uh, one of the links in my channel below if you're w interested in moto vlogging where I ha I'm on my motorcycle and I just talk about whatever and you know, I'll have a little camera on, on, on my helmet and just I just go off on whatever I get into a lot of the personal aspects of my life I know many of you over the years have asked for that and that channel has also got a link in this channel here. So, a lot of you have been PMing, hey, what's going on, where are you at, and uh, been talking a lot about where I wanted to be with my mobile devices. So, I haven't fully settled, but for now, I have changed my two phones. I had an LG, and I've had, like, as a little flip phone, and then I have my Palm Pre Plus, right? I've owned three iPhones. My wife has an iPhone 4, so those of you who follow me in these videos kind of know all of my techno history. I've had HTC Evo, I've had uh, the Hero, I what was it, the Hero, yes, and all this other stuff. And I had a lot of videos talking about tablets and how the, you know, the iPad's not for me, this and that, and what do I expect from tablet? Well, guess what? I finally made up my mind, but before I get to what I actually bought, because yes, Mr. Ben has purchased the tablets, but... My wife and son, it's the Kindle Fire, they love it. This thing is great. I'm going to do reviews on this, we're going to discuss this. I don't need to get into any wars, this versus the iPad. My personal opinion, I've already given about the iPad. I think it's too big, I don't like iOS very much. I have, I can go into it more, for those that you don't like, but um, I think the Kindle Fire is a, a damn good product, and whatever the pundits are saying, I've had this i uh, been able to see my son with it, my wife, and how things are going. Uh, got lots of good things to say about this device. Very cool device. I am proud to say that while I looked at Windows Phone 7, they are, it's impressive. It's impressive. And coming from three generations of, of iPhones and just dealing with, with the headaches and um, what I didn't like about iOS, and iOS is great for a lot of other people, obviously, the majority out there, or a good portion of the people out there have iPhones, it was a big headache for me. However, what I have now is the Palm Pre 2. I decided to stay with WebOS. I cannot, cannot abandon my favorite mobile operating system, guys. I am though shocked. I wasn't, I was not aware of, of what a big difference in app, apps that are available for the latest version of WebOS 2 versus what I was stuck with with 1.45. And this thing is fast 
I'm loving it. It's like a whole new web webOS for the win for me. Even though maybe it's digging, it's it's buried long on you know with the whole movement from HP and making it open. Who knows where it's gonna go? But awesome phone. Verizon still has a few of these. I think this is great. It does everything I need it to do, what I expect it to do, and does it way, 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 way better than my Palm Pre Plus. The battery life, I'm, I'm, I am I'm, was used to charging my Palm Pre Plus once every day. I've been using this thing, I'm charging it once every two days. What they use, I mean, it's fantastic. So I'm really impressed with the Palm Pre 2 with the latest WebOS, and I'm hearing that we're also going to get another update coming, um, possibly if Verizon gets it, for another WebOS operating system version coming up so I'm looking forward to that on this device the LG AT&T is yes a Blackberry torch 9810 I've gone back to Blackberry I've had an old Blackberry uh, Blackberry OS 7 I'm impressed with this we're gonna go over this as well uh, we don't know when Blackberry 10 is gonna come out I'm impressed with Blackberry 10 but I'm gonna tell you from the Blackberries I used to use Blackberry operating set so OS 7 fantastic I like the UI I, I just never kinda went back to it you know I had that attitude everybody else has ah Blackberry who you know that's so five minutes ago type of thing not five minutes ago it's here now I think in my opinion uh, you know, a lot of people if you're like me and you think phones are getting too much rather than what was it uh, a pundit had said I believe it was John Gruber had said the iPhone is a computer with a phone app I would beg to differ and say that I'm beginning to see lots of phones be well, let me just put this way. I'm getting to see a lot of phones. Actually, they should be called game consoles with a phone app. That's just my opinion. It's a little sarcasm right there. But nonetheless, wow. It, it, when you're participating in some of these ecosystems, that's all it is. You know, when you have double core GPUs and things like that, what else can you expect? However, BlackBerry, it's still, it's not going to be all the apps and the whole game console thing and you know the, the little bubbly social networks and things like that. But... It does have Facebook and all the other stuff, but it does the things that I need it to do. And I think it does task switching and how it handles services because I am not looking at this as a computer. To me, screen real estate is a big problem when it comes to saying that this is something to say, hey, we're post a desktop. Screen real estate is a big problem. That's why we went to tablets. We can get to tablets later. But for a phone, I, I don't expect it to necessarily be app driven. I want it to provide a service. I don't want everything to always be defined in an app. Because then if it's an app, it's its own little island a lot of times. And then what happens if I want something from this app to do something with this app? You know, I, I'm thinking of a phone and better do a function and a service for me, and that's what it is. I think, I think BlackBerry is doing that very well, and I think that's part of the problem and why they're delaying BlackBerry 10. If they go backwards at all from what I'm already seeing within uh, BlackBerry operating uh, OS 7, it's going to be problematic. It would, I think, would be a whole lot more egg on the face. Yeah, they're in a, a, a press decline, and... The shares are declining and a lot of bad mojo going around. But I'm here and I'll say, hey, look, I'm pretty impressed with this uh, BlackBerry operating system. Uh, why do I keep saying that? Uh, OS 7, fantastic. We're going to go over some of the services. If you're bored of that, hey, and you want to say this is so five minutes ago, that's fine. But you may learn something. There's a lot of good technical things. And I don't think, you know what, we should always keep our options open. I've been there, done that with the iPhone. My wife still got the current iPhone. I'm not just talking out of my ass with that, okay? So I think that we need to, uh, like I said, keep our options open. Now, for the tablet that I got. Everybody who's always followed me, the tablet to me cannot, or at least in my opinion, is not yet a standalone device. It gets, as most people that I know, and there's quite a few of them that own uh, iPads, it ends up sitting on the table. They don't use its full potential. And it, that is true. It has a lot of potential. But it is not the best device yet, in my opinion, to handle all the human input as rapidly and as efficiently as we're used to with our desktop means of input. That's something I've always argued about tablets. Yeah, it's got a cool gimmicky thing to it, and it's got it's a, people, hey, you know, this is nice and neat, you can do it. It's light, it's portable, it's one plus that's the, it's got going for it, but we're not seeing it replacing some of the hardcore types of, or, or just, well, I don't even say hardcore, or just everyday business applications. It's not, it's not yet there. It's going to be there, sure. Yeah, well, it's just a form factor in the end. We get the power and we get the keyboards and other means of human input that is far faster than even giving a command and waiting for uh, 
some results to come up from, from talking to an AI, you know, that's something that we see in a lot of science fiction shows, and always say, you know, you add humor and all this artificial intelligence to these things, why is it that every science fiction show out there that I've seen, where the, where the computer gets its own personality and tries to be funny with you, that entire show is committed to disarming the artificial intelligence and making it back to simple commands. I think that's something that we should consider when we're talking about all these new and cool features that I really consider really gimmicky. Anyway, to the tablet. I really digress a whole lot. The tablet, to me, is a slave device to my phone because my phone, I expect a service, but its screen real estate is a problem. So I want the screen real estate to get bigger. That's why I saw the tablet. I didn't see the tablet to replace my desktop or my laptop. Those are very different things, very different operating systems. I wanted the tablet to be a slave to my phone to help the services of my phone do what my phone, what I need it to do on the go, right? I don't expect to do all kinds of computing and things, and we are pushing our devices, these mobile devices, the more and more we push them, we're actually blurring, blurring the lines of mobile computing versus what we just expect to do on the, on the desktop and laptop. And that's when we're going to get into those obstacles that I've spoken about in my previous videos of, of efficiency, productivity, and function. The simplicity of mobile software will then start absorbing some of the complexities, and you'll start losing what that post, I think, what Jobs meant in post PC and keeping things simple with this, these mobile type operating systems regaining the complexity of what we have within laptops and desktops. We've got to be kind of careful in, in what we expect. And then we say, oh, we want the battery life to last 10 days. I mean, come on. You, you want to do X, Y, and Z? There's costs, and, uh, there's costs uh, to benefit ratios that we've got to discuss. Anyway, so the tablet I got, yes, is the BlackBerry pay, Playbook. It is a slave device to, the, to the, my BlackBerry. It, commu it, it communicates, it does everything I needed to do. We can do a bridge device. It is the slave device to my phone. I was waiting for WebOS, but you got to get the, 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 the touchpad. is still, even on eBay, out of the price range that I'm, I'm willing to pay. I think $199 is a magic number. The playbook was $199, and then now all of a sudden, RIM has decided to make all of its tablets $299. So this guy went up $100. And... I don't know. So I guess nobody's going to buy a 16 gig anymore. Why would you when you when it's that much more money, right? Nonetheless, we're going to go over that on what I want and, and demonstrate things about the the tablet helping your phone, right? It's always that's why the phones are getting to be these 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 gigantic things we hold in our hands, right? Like the, the that that Samsung Note or what what have you. These these and then the screen real estate's getting bigger because we people want big real estate, right? People want to say, man. That's, it, 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 it's, it's nice that it does this, but boy, it's so teeny tiny, I want it to be able to get bigger. That's what tablets come in. I think it's a perfect relationship. we got BlackBerry, BlackBerry Playbook. WebOS with HP was going to do that. Um, I, have, I have my Palm Pre 2. I'm always on the radar for a Palm Pre 3 at the right price and a, and a, and a touchpad at the right price. And until that day, I'm not going to have that relationship, but... I'm going to try to regain, and so what I want to say regain, I want to try to get back a lot more of what I had lost with my expectations with the iPhone. In the iPhone, I originally bought a smartphone to, to help compute on the go, to get to, to help my clients, and to, to get things done. When I'm, because I'm always called, you know, you get these, these bugging calls that say, hey man, I get, I get this done. It's, it's like a, a panic. It's always, you know, we need something yesterday kind of scenario. And it's great to be able to have that, that time in between where you aren't with a laptop. And maybe you can, you can get something done with the, with the devices in hand. Like a phone, you're like, okay, yep, we're going to help you out a little bit. And you log in, remote in, whatever. Well, maybe I'll do a little bit of code here. Uh, if it's not, you know, no compiled type thing and send it in or update store procedures, what, what have you. You can get in and do all kinds of things from something that I expect is on a limited device. I don't expect it to be that laptop. And, boy, am I just rambling, rambling on. Anyway, so those are things to look forward to. We're going to get into Windows 8 and, and, and Metro and all this good stuff. So stay tuned. Again, Happy New Year, and thanks for watching.